Photoshop contains several preferences that you'll need to modify. Keep in mind that Photoshop is not designed exclusively as a film or video tool. Therefore, you're going to need to change how Photoshop thinks in order to get the results that you want. So we've got our preferences open, and I'd like you to walk through a few of the things that you could change in Photoshop CS3 to make it a little more video friendly. First off, be sure your color picker stays on the Adobe Color Picker. This will give you a consistent color picker through all Adobe applications. Next, under image interpolation, you have bicubic. It's generally a good idea to leave this set to the standard bicubic, best for smooth gradients. If you do a lot of upsizing or downsizing, then choose between bicubic smoother or sharper. If you're running on a high res screen, you might want to set the UI font size to large. Next, you have several options. If you rely on Bridge, Adobe's file browser, you might want to tell it to automatically launch when you open Photoshop. I always uncheck used shift key for tool switch. I'm not crazy about having to hold down the shift key when I want to switch between tools with keyboard shortcuts. I also like to use the zoom wheel on my mouse to quickly zoom in or out. Go ahead and click Next. Under Interface, things are pretty much set up as is. Yeah, you want to see colors in the menu to make it easier to see items that have been color coded. And tooltips are great because when you roll over something, it gives you a plain English definition of what that object or user interface element does. If you want to keep the user interface a little cleaner, you might choose to auto collapse icon palettes. Those are these things over here that let you access quick tools. Under file handling, you're going to want to go ahead and always save image previews and append the file extensions. Now, if you do a lot of web or print work, these settings may need to be customized. But for video, a custom icon as well as a thumbnail can be very helpful. The file extension is the two or three letter code that lets the computer know how to interpret the file. You always want this added to the end of the file name. Under File Compatibility, I'm going to go ahead and maximize Photoshop compatibility always. This will make sure that the file is backwards compatible with older systems and software. Go ahead and click Next. Performance allows you to adjust how much RAM you can assign to Photoshop. And ideally, you're going to give it between 538 and 700 megabytes. Now this number may vary slightly on your system. It's a good idea to go ahead and assign a number that's reasonable and gives Photoshop the performance that it needs. Under History States, these are your level of undo. And by default, Photoshop is set to 20. For most users, taking this up to 100 or so is a good starting point, especially if you're new to Photoshop. Let's just type that in as 100. Lastly in this section are your scratch disks. And it's a good idea to go ahead and enable a second scratch disk. You could target an internal drive or an external drive, and this will boost the performance when opening large files. A scratch disk essentially acts as additional RAM. Let's go ahead and target this drive here. I'll turn this one off. Our next category is cursors. And I find it very useful to see the normal brush tip so I get an idea of what size the cursor is, but I like to go ahead and show the crosshairs inside of that brush tip. For other cursors like the eyedropper, I find a precise target point a lot more useful. Click Next. Transparency and gamut shouldn't need many changes at all, just leave it as is. Under Units and Rulers, I'm going to go ahead and change rulers to measure in pixels. That's because in the video world, there's really no such thing as inches. Rather, we measure our graphics in total pixel area, and that defines the graphic format. We'll click Next. Guides, Grid, and Slices allow you to color code things within Photoshop. I generally like my guides to be a nice red color. That's just because I'm used to seeing red for guides. 
You can choose any color you want. I also will turn slices off because I don't want to see them. They just get in the way because they're really there for web work. Click Next. Under Plugins, you can go ahead and access an additional Plugins folder. So if you have plugins on your thumb drive, let's say you travel as a freelancer, this will let you bring them with and load them when you boot Photoshop. Click Next for the last category, which is Type. And here we could choose a font preview size. I like extra large. This way, if there's a client in the room, they could see the font menu choices displayed in the actual font face. You may also want to turn on Smart Quotes, which will automatically substitute apostrophe and quotation marks when you press the key next to the return button. You see the key next to the return or enter button on your keyboard is the key for feet and inches. However, if you want true apostrophe or quotation marks, enable Use Smart Quotes and Photoshop will automatically substitute the correct character. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, in order for those preferences to be stored, you will want to quit and relaunch Adobe Photoshop. Those preferences are written when the application closes. So, on your system, you should go ahead and quit and relaunch after you've stored your preferences. There is, however, one more important change, and that is under the Edit menu, and we choose Color Settings. For video, we need to go ahead and turn Color Management off. At this point in workflow, most people are not using calibrated video monitors that are calibrated to color profiles or lookup tables. Instead, you will want to click More Options, and then from the Settings menu, go ahead and choose Color Management Off. By turning Color Management Off, you've informed Photoshop that you don't want it to attempt to simulate how CMYK output is going to look by changing the colors on your computer monitor. Color management and the color settings here are primarily for a print-based workflow, so turning it off will make things easier for you when working with color between motion graphics and video editing applications. At this point, you can click OK, and Photoshop is now essentially configured to work as a video software application.